the in and not in um as again not really covered in the book but i thought it was important to cover that here as well this is similar to finding but here it you will see that it reports it a bit different so let's say you've got your data box uh, and you want to check if data is in data box data -T -A. so obviously <laughs> this is intuitive so let's just so how you would write it is just simple you'll just ask data in data box and obviously you could store this in a variable um, for example answer right if you wanted to then you would print answer um, but yeah I just wanted to show you what gets printed um, and what happens here is here is the first time we're actually being exposed to booleans uh, remember I said when we when we did the variable names that you are not allowed to use um, true and false as a variable name because that's built in so what when you're using in and not in um you will then you will see that um it gives you a boolean true or false that's where you will be exposed to it so again i can check for example if there's gc in data box and that will obviously give you false and obviously if you then say not in because there are times when you when you know that the thing that you're looking for is in the minority um, so you might want to ask if something is not in something do whatever we haven't gotten really to conditionals yet but this is just to give you a taste for it so i'm checking whether gc is not in data box and yeah so basically it's, it's asking whether the statement that you are giving is true or false so in the first one over here i'm imposing a statement on this variable i am stating tata is in data box and it's saying whether or not the statement that i've just made is true or false yeah i'm saying gc is is in data box and it's saying no you're wrong it's false so yeah i'm making the statement and i'm saying okay gc is not in data box and so obviously the statement i'm making is true so it depends you just have to you just have to figure out how what you are typing is being read by the code okay so this part over here i want you to play with it a bit you can copy this and this is just to show you um sort of what you're getting towards what kind of things you're going to build this is a little game that i built um it's just asking for some input from you and this, this is all stuff that you haven't done it's just to show you how i've used the in and whether something is in something you're going to come to conditionals when you're going to use that a lot and you're going to use what is known as if uh, the statements where you're going to see and you might have if you read some python code you would have seen things like if else elif um while um so this is just to show you so i i, I wrote a little bit of code that asks you to um to ask with it's basically code to check whether you are superhuman this is not eugenics but i just code to see whether you are superhuman um and it's got the superhuman dna which is over here and it if your sequence of your dna is found inside of that long sequence of superhuman dna then it's going to tell you that you are in fact superhuman and if not then you'll see so what i've said is so if you run this code you will get the following it will say please enter your dna to see whether you are superhuman if your name starts with a to g your dna is that sequence and so you go on okay so mine is t so i'm going to take t t a t and check whether i'm superhuman because it's asking you to insert that dna if your name falls within those boundaries and here it is including t up until z okay so and it says i'm sorry your dna shows that you are naughty maybe try to be on santa's good list next year but maybe just copy this this part it's in github again um, play around with it or play it with somebody or just have a look at what I wrote and see what you're heading towards. One important thing that I want to mention is that in all programming languages, you need to familiarize yourself with the help function. Um, basically, you can look up all the different methods and functions that exist within that code using the help, how exactly you're supposed to use it in terms of using the proper syntax whether it takes an argument or not because sometimes like i said before that functions can take an 
normally takes an argument it has a function name like print and you have your open brackets now you can print print just as is with print open bracket it won't give you an error but sometimes you have functions that if you do not add something as an argument it will give you an error um, so using something like help um, and placing inside of there what you're looking for will tell you whether it's a function or a method, whether you, whether it has default arguments. So if you don't put anything in, it will decide what to run for you and whether it requires an argument or, and if you don't put it in, then you will get an error. So all those kinds of things. So just have a look at how, uh, I, for example, know that string or str is a um, particular data type in python so i'm just gonna if i call help on there so again that's how it looks help it takes an argument i used str for string and then it will tell me all the different um, methods that can be applied to string some of it we have seen before i'm just going to go down because i don't want you to read the entire class but like count, so it will say s for your string dot count, and it will say you can put a start and an end. You can, you know, some of it like ends with I haven't seen you used find, so it will tell you, um, you know, return the lowest index in the string. Um, it, but I will do a lesson on this on its own about how to read and understand all of this, but. Just so you know that the help function is what you're going to use and you can call it inside of Jupyter or inside your IDE um, or even inside Python itself if you're running it from the command line. And you can use it just to see how all of your different, whether it's a data type or function or method, how it all works.